let's get this out the way because um as you know uh i don't know if you saw it but uh if you if you followed my previous streams there was a quick sort of like pow 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 like uh everybody was going after youtube again you know we had the carlos matza thing which was being dubbed the vox adpocalypse uh and it's look you have to know the mo now right like when people go after these uh the, the, these companies they know exactly what they're doing carlos matza didn't sit down on that day and think to himself oh this is the day i've had enough of like steven crowder upsetting me and hurting my feel feelings carlos matza is not a little vulnerable person he's somebody who's a very powerful media figure with ties to not only powerful political groups but powerful uh, publications that in turn also have ties to powerful political groups he is the face of their work he is somebody that has took a constant uh, attack on fox news and does so in an unimpeachable position so he knows exactly what he's doing when he chooses a specific day to go to war with you know conservative media or youtube or however you want to frame what went down with the whole stephen crowder thing now uh right about the same time um we also saw first of all youtube were like going yeah well we got us we, we're so so sorry we're gonna uh, get rid of all these borderline cases you know joe rogan sort of problematic in the way that he talks to everybody even though he doesn't pass any judgment himself or have any form of propaganda and we know he's popular and we just can't stop it and we're sorry if it's making people get red pilled and we're gonna do more to stop it you're not even a real journalist so that's right that happened at the, at the same time carlos matter decided to go to war and on top of that then oh just a coincidence i suppose that at the same time this is going on new york times comes out and goes yo radicalization look i interviewed this guy who's probably a fucking troll certainly is being disingenuous and he told me that youtube turned him into an alt-right nazi and then the guy goes actually i never said that and he goes, Shh, shut up i'm doing a narrative here Right, and here's some data that proves that he actually got brought to left-wing material through YouTube's algorithms. Doesn't that just prove the point, Kevin? Shut up! I'm doing a narrative here. I'm trying to do a narrative, guys. So on top of that, one of the other things that came in was, um, and it kind of got drowned out in the noise by the bigger stories, but it was at the same time as all of this was going on. CNET did a hit piece, right? Meet the angry gaming YouTubers who turn outrage into views. Oh, God. Fucking... Right. <sighs> Gotta be... Gotta fucking stop that rage. The irony. The unbelievable hypocrisy of any mainstream digital publication saying YouTube, or anyone else for that matter, turns outrage into fucking views. That is the only reason 95% of you publications still exist, because you ain't published anything newsworthy in approximately five years. You moved over to hate clicks, because you didn't want to do the thing you had to do, which was actually start fucking learning how to do journalism again. Employing less useless bloggers and actual people capable of breaking, you know, stories and writing important things that people care about. No, you just mine hate clicks. Thing happened on internet today. This made people mad. We agree. People should be mad. What think you? Every piece of digital fucking journalism for five years. So the idea, the idea that you would even just write that, and again, it's this lack of self-awareness that's prevalent in, among journalists these days, where he, he, right, Ian Schur is, well, actually, I'm being, I'm, I might be harsh there, because he might not have written the headline, but a sub-editor has, and an editor's approved it, and nobody's gone, hang on a minute, don't we do outrage? Isn't this article actually outrage? And we're trying to we're trying to turn this outrage into people viewing our article. 
no one will notice that because we're banging on the gamers, aren't we? But then, wait till you see this fucking collection of YouTubers they've picked out. It's so wild because they loop, they throw together people that like, oh, it's the usual suspect. But there's some names on this list that don't make no sense to me. So why are gamers angry? Are we still banging on about the gamers? It's the gamers. Oh, it's the gamers. The gamers, the 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 most worthless and yet most powerful group in society. Schrodinger's cunt. That's gamers. You either control it, you control everything. You put Trump in the White House. You put white nationalists in the White House. You you helped embolden Russia. Ha! But you're also not gonna win, Goober Grapers, because look, look at Cyberpunk twenty fucking whatever year, and look at all the options for customization. Ha! In your face, Goober Grapers. Like, well, which is it? You haven't even decided. You haven't even stuck. You haven't even stuck to a fucking narrative. Yeah, it's just whatever. You're just Schrodinger's cunt. That's all gamers are to these people. Anyway, right. How to make a successful video on one of the internet's most popular sites. Find something to be angry about. Go to online forums. Track what's hot on Twitter and figure out the outrage of the day. Step two, rant into a camera for 10 minutes. Step three, profit. Yeah, it's that easy. Being a YouTuber is a piece of piss, by the way. Right, and then, and then also, right? Okay, let me do my own um, three-point model. How to become a, how to become a tech journal tech games or pol politics journalist? Step one: find something people are angry about. Or people saying something you personally disagree with. Step two. Write absolute disingenuous garbage that misrepresents the issue and strawmans the group you disagree with. Step three. Profit. Except you don't actually profit because all your businesses are failing. But you're bailed out by political groups who have a vested interest in fucking allowing you to peddle your lies. Yeah? Is that alright? Is, is that Does that three part... Agenda sound like a business model that's maybe being employed anywhere. Anyway, welcome to 2019. Motherfuckers were ranting into cameras for YouTube from the minute YouTube existed. From the minute webcams were a thing. People were saying, I don't like this. And uploading it. Do you know why? Because people like to have discussions. It's a tale as old as time. Forget the internet. What did we used to do before the internet? Well, I'll tell you. I'm old enough to remember. You cunts probably ain't. You know what we used to do? We used to meet up in person and argue about stupid shit. Well, I saw a film and I thought film was bad. How can you think film was bad? I think film was good. You're stupid. You're stupider. And on and on it went. Why do you think all the first forums were that sort of thing? About sports, about movies, about books... Whatever it was, the, the the internet was basically porn and arguments. <laughs> that was it. Porn, arguments, a little bit of educational stuff, but porn and arguments and pop-up ads. Smash this phone! Smash this phone! Like, that's what the internet was. I don't know, I don't know what else to tell you. That's what it was. And it was great. By the way... It's better than this shit. Yeah, and there was the pills that you used to get offered for penis enlargement, and that would cure your baldness, and they don't work. Didn't for me. I ended up balder, and I lost an inch. Think there was soy in them. <laughs> Alpha brain. Right. Welcome to 2019. Where some influential gamers on YouTube have learned what many others, including the President of the United States, it is the specter of Donald Trump. The specter of Trump. I can't even... 
read an article about YouTube culture, video games specifically. Donald Trump hates video games and thinks they turn you into killers because he's a moron, right? But somehow we're all learning from Donald Trump. Of course the orange man is there. Of course. Anger sells. It sells big. I will bet you, by the way, right? I will bet you a shiny $20 note that in the original draft, it said it sells bigly. And the editor went, nah, it's too on the nose. You can't do that. Honestly, I bet you. In fact, I'm going to ask that cunt. I'm going to email. I'll email him. I'll email Ian Sure. I bet it said it sells bigly. I will bet you any money. Because these cunts are so unimaginative and fucking dull. He never even said big league. He said big league. How long am I going to be streaming? Till I can't. Till I can't fucking stream anymore. Till something gives. Body, brain, whatever. Starting last year, a new cadre. Good word. I do like cadre. It's a word that's not used. Uh, um... As, as much as it should be. Of negative YouTube gaming commentators came to prominence. Wait till you see the names. They didn't come to prominence in the last year. I think like one of them did. Some of them are like old as fuck. Almost in unison, they each enjoyed spikes in audience and view counts, attracting hundreds of thousands of subscribers. That translated into millions of views a week as they dissected the video games industry's missteps, misadventures, and controversies. The views get rewarded by YouTube in ad dollars. Well, thanks for explaining. <laughs> like, I'm a moron. I've been living under a rock for fucking 20 years. I don't know how any of this works. Thank you for putting it into boomer speak, you fucking clown. Subscribers translate to views, and views translate to money. I'm Brian Butterfield. <laughs> it's a fucking... What are you doing? This article is fucking so bad. Oh, God. Anyway. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm glad... Pe oh, yes. Thank you, Worker Max, for appreciating the reference. Bon, 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 bons. Uh, right, anyway, their negativity comes in many forms. Some YouTubers produce a stream of videos criticizing every imaginable fault a game could have. I guess this is called, you know, ooh, I don't know, critique. <laughs> Isn't that, like, a good thing? By the way, none of this could flourish if games journalists did their job, but whatever. Um, visual bugs, awkward controls, stupid storylines... Others obsess over games developers' attempts to fix glitches. There are commentators who rail against efforts to upsell players who typically shell out $60 for a game. These microtransactions, as they're known, can include different character designs, new looks for weapons and additional stories, and are a source of constant irritation for vocal commentators who see them as a rip-off. Others veer into criticism of outspoken game company executives. Some attacks get personal, criticizing members of the gaming community for their looks or perceived political beliefs. Right? Talks about E3. There's no single formula, and the YouTubers have taken different tacks, such as high production videos with formal scripts or off-the-cuff rambling. Shout out to off-the-cuff rambling. Big fan of that. Writing scripts takes ages, doesn't it? Yeah, I could probably condense my hour-long videos into 20 if I scripted them. But half the fun's listening to an old man ramble, in it? And when I'm dead, you know, so it's not for a while, but if it was, if I got got or whatever, you're going to cherish all that rambling, all those tangents. Well, not you. Obviously, you all hate me because you're my audience. But, you know, like, whoever's watching this right now, like, a relative, like some love child that never got to meet the real me. He was, like, watching all of this hour of footage trying to learn what his dad was about. Yeah, you're going to love all that rambling. You're going to love that shout-out to your son. I hope you call Richard. Not many Richards left. It's a great name. Anyway.
But yeah, big fan of the rambling. Um, all rely on the same strategy. Getting the audience angry. Some, including Tyler Denny, who runs the Clean Prince Gaming Channel, which is more than 631,000 subscribers, create slickly edited video essays, dissecting news reports, and rumors of corporate screw-ups that led to a game's disappointing release. Some of his most popular videos are a series titled Game Name Didn't Just Die, It Was Murdered. I don't know. Interesting, right? Something I might want to click on. What's the name of that cunt? Um, who does them videos that were at death of a game? Nerd. Nerd Slayer, is it? You ever seen him? You know what I'm talking about? Death of a game. And he sets it up like he's a detective. Yeah, they're fucking great, right? Go watch them. They're fucking sick. He lays out all the news. Or like, he goes back and researches all the history, like... Why the game didn't work out, and then, you know, and, it, and he does it like it's a, he's investigating a murder mystery, which is, you know, maybe a little bit contrived, right? But it's something different. You have to package it different. People don't just want to watch people ramble. I get that. That's why my numbers are so low. It's fine. Not bitter. Did I mention I got a shout out on H3H3? Did I mention that? <laughs> but anyway, I went and looked at that guy's channel. There's like nothing bad there. He's just criticizing, he's just saying games are bad. Legacy Killer HD, uh, who lists his name as Michael on Twitter, and like Denny didn't comment for this story because no one wants to talk to you, by the way, you fucking loser. Uh, posts videos to his more than 510,000 subscribers that include thumbnails written in all caps Gamers are angry. Damage control. The huge problems. And. Huge lies detected. Let me tell you, because obviously this cunt doesn't understand it, because he's like, he seemed amazed at like the prospect of an ad runs over the top of something. You make some money, they make some money, they sell some shit potentially. Like, they were doing that, by the way, again, day one on the internet, there was ads everywhere, right? This guy's like, and that's how YouTube works. Like, yeah, we know, right? You, you fucking boom a cunt. But anyway, um, thumbnails are their own logic right like i do mine i don't know if my thumbnails are all that good actually but you know you remember when uh was banks was having one of his fucking meltdowns and he went i came up with that thumbnail t few and boxing and all that and it's like yeah unfortunately it turns out people do click they're more likely to click on really stupid fucking thumbnails they are it's just basic advertising i don't like it i don't think i'd ever do it I think I stay just within the lines I'd be willing to go to, you know. But like, whenever I see like it's like the face of the YouTuber, like they just pull in like a really dumb face, and next to him it's got like, you know what I mean? Wacky Rich, Wacky Rich has lost it. One 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 exclamation point. Like, do you, do you know what I mean? Like, I I think to myself, who clicks on this shit? But the answer is millions. Because all the most popular, everyone's thumbnails are like that. So the idea, by the way, that Legacy Killer HD is doing something that, like, it's just what works. It's just what works. And trust me, I know from doing my own shit, you know, my overall, the metrics on my YouTube channel are up, actually. Um, since doing all this dumb stuff, like putting in regimented thumbnails and you know chopping up the live streams and using different metadata and so there is like, if you give a fuck and you learn about it you can push your rookie numbers up anyway all right this is where it starts to get good because uh keep in mind how, just how blase those two channels listed are right they're, they're nothing they are like that is like just an average story. You ever just cruising through YouTube, by the way, and you just find a YouTuber you've never heard of, never seen, never come across any of the work before, it's like 2 million followers, and you're like, what the fuck? And you click on it, and it's just like them playing Total War. You know, or just something like that. And it's like, they're just a niche enthusiast, like... Yeah, see, all the time. All the time. This is what I'm saying. People don't realize how monolithic 
and just huge, just vast YouTube is. Like, you find new shit all the time. I find YouTubers all the time where it's like, I, how are you popular? Like, but I mean, obviously, in this niche, in this field, of course you are. Because you're the only guy doing that stuff. So you find it all. Yeah, you know, like, just mad stuff. 400,000 views. What does he do? He reads Warhammer 40k law over still images. And with a speech impediment or whatever, and you're like, this can't be real. This has got like, this has got like a million hit clicks on every video, but yep. And then the game stealers came. You're like, this can't be real, but it's real. That was totally unnecessary. Right. Totally un nice to catch you, Live Rich. Hope you're well, mate. Nice job on Torin's panel with the lawyers, too. Thanks, dude. Appreciate the $20 or there or thereabouts. Like I say, you gotta you gotta take it serious when you sit down with the lawyers. You have to fucking get into the lawyer state of mind, get get all the paperwork out, because they're gonna they think you're a cakewalk because you don't know the law and you don't know the language. But uh, you're never getting me, never Richard. Anyway, yeah, you know you find motherfuckers like that all the time, and they all got these thumbnails. This is just like some throwaway shit. These this isn't even the bad bit. This is like just how can you watch what they link these two YouTubers into? Um. It's hard to pinpoint why this torrent of negativity, this isn't negativity, it's just criticism. If you believe that criticism is in it of itself inherently negative to a certain degree, I can understand that argument. Not even a real journalism. But the, the reality is that like, that's right. when you criticize a company that's like ripping off consumers or whatever, you, you know what I mean? It's not, is it negative? Is it really? I don't think so. I think they definitely deserve to be called out about it. And equally as well, like, you know, if I criticize, they obviously love what they're criticizing. Ain't nobody wakes up and goes like, oh, that thing I don't give a fuck. Like, horse racing. I don't give a fuck about horse racing. You're never going to see me, like, do a video like, guys, you never guess what's going on at horse, right? The, the, the There's hay everywhere. Like, I don't even know. I can't even. You're not even a real I don't even know what I'm agreeing. I don't care about it. I don't care, frankly. I don't care, frankly. I don't care. So I'm never going to criticize horse racing because I just don't give a fuck. I, don't, I just don't care about it. Good uh, good sub, by the way, Rickovic on Steam. There's hay everywhere. The people who sit on the horses are really little. Like, I just don't. Like, what? What am I going to say? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> if somebody, like, literally said to them, we're abolishing horse racing. And someone, Richard, come on, man. You're about freedom of speech and all that. Freedom of expression. They're banning horse. I'm, I'm all right, actually. <laughs> I'm not going to war with that one. Just, you know, let the jockeys. <laughs> let the jockeys fight that one. Ah, you little bastards. Yeah. Anyway. You, to criticize something, you have to love it. You, you have to. Or you, or you just wouldn't give a fuck. So these people you know, love games, journalism. and very often probably some of the games That's that they're right. criticizing. So to call it entirely negative is, like, really disingenuous. Anyway. You're not even a real journalist. Thanks for all these subs coming in, by the way. Oh, wait. That's right. Oh, no. Apart from that one, please. No. Oh, why? Why? They'll use that against me, Reykjavik. So someone's going to go through all the people who've subbed to Richard Lewis. And it's going to be like... Richard Lewis, who was one time subscribed to by Alex Jones. <laughs> like, no, I didn't. That's that's going to come out, isn't it? When I'm dead. Anyway, whatever. We'll just have to, <laughs> have to roll with that one. Um... It's hard to pinpoint why this torrent of negativity has become so popular. Always has been, and just always is in human nature, but okay. But analysts, researchers, and some of the YouTubers themselves told me the video streaming services recommendation programs may share some of the blame. Oh, right. So it's all about the algorithm? Oh, I see. Okay. You've took a different approach, my friend, to everyone else who was attacking the algorithm this week. How very interesting. That's right. It's, uh, it's YouTube that picks the top results when you search, and it's YouTube that recommends the next video to watch. That automated software is responsible for more than 70% of overall time spent on YouTube. The New York Times reported, noting it's drawn accusations of leading users down rabbit holes filled with extreme and divisive content in an attempt to keep them watching and drive up to site user numbers. What you're not referencing there, Ian Sure, you disingenuous fucking foreskin, is 
that 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 article was about supposedly radicalizing people to far right ideologies. You're talking about people going, yeah, fucking hell, Blizzard really shit the bed with Destiny. Didn't didn't like they're not the same. As a result, Google, YouTube's parent company, rewards this negativity by sending millions of viewers to the channel. Yeah, that's exactly how it works. It's exactly how it works. Right, Mr. Google, who runs Google, this is like Ian Scher's thinking about this. Mr. Google calls up and goes, Listen, uh, if there's one thing I am, it's an angry gamer. Uh, yes, Mr. Google, sir. What would you like today, Mr. Google, sir? Are there any angry gamers on our platform? <laughs> because if there are, I press the view button that sends millions of viewers uh, to, to them. Only angry gamers, though. But what about all of the million, the multi-million dollar deals were actually done with mainstream media where every metric shows were suppressing endemic creators and pandering more and more to corporate interests. Listen, as long as there's breath in my lungs and blood in my veins, Google has my name on it. I'm Mr. Google. The company's called Google. You will send millions of viewers to angry neckbeards and incels and only angry neckbeards and incels. Do I make myself... Yes, Mr. Google, sir. Yes, Mr. Google. And they press the view button and millions of viewers are just beamed. It is uh, like, fuck You're me. Not even a real like, journalism. Is anyone buying this That's anymore? Right. Like, is anyone buying this anymore? Fucking hell. Anyway. <clears throat> On Wednesday, YouTube said it would take a tougher stand against the more toxic elements on all parts of the service. Everyone on YouTube will be subject to the new hate speech policies. I don't know why fucking Legacy Killer HD has anything to do with a hate speech policy. Blizzard fucked up this time. Hate speech, sir, apparently. Um, whether it be in videos they post or in other actions like comments or stories. Right. Now... This is where it starts to get good, my friends. That was all a preamble. That was all some, like, improvisational jazz comedy uh, with your favorite YouTuber, Wacky Rich. Over the past... This is this is how Ian Schur, boomer extraordinaire, spent his time. Over the past six months, I watched hundreds of these videos, seeing ads from car makers like Volvo and Honda. Imagine this, like, just ads just appear. And again... Are we still thinking? Like, are we still doing this? Sorry, I went like that That wrestler. What's his name? Brian, what's his face? Yeah. Yes, yes. Are we still thinking that if an ad appears on content on YouTube... That's right. It fucking... You... Your company endorses everything that's... Like, right. I watch the TV... Right. I've watched TV. <laughs> I've watched TV programs, right? So, I don't know. Pick something out of the blue. I'm watching that harrowing episode of This Is England where that rape happens and Combo's out of prison and he fucking murders the guy who did it and, um, well, she murders the guy who did it and he takes the blame and goes back to jail. Harrowing episode. Great television, though, by the way. Great television, if anyone's seen it. Now, I remember when that went out, right, on Channel 4 and... There was commercial breaks, because that's how TV gets made, right? Now, in the middle of this harrowing episode of TV, which deals with racism, prison reform, uh, rape, incest, murder, unrequited love, heavy topics, man. Poverty. Um, there was adverts for, like, Da, 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 Asda, get your fucking discounts at Asda. Drink your cheap cola and eat your cheap fucking f and eat your cheap food. You poor stupid bastards. Da, 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 da. Upbeat as fuck, right? Well, according to this guy, Ian Sure, Asda's actually saying that they fully support rape, murder, poverty, everything. Like, no, it like they. They bought a block of time to put their adverts on 
And they don't know what the content's going to be to even make a determination about whether their corporate values, the most oxymoronic statement that we just eat every day, we just, mm, corporate value, they, no, there are, there's no such thing. That's right. <laughs> right. It's called profit and how we make more of it. But whatever. Nobody calls Asda up going, I just saw a commercial from Asda. Uh, after watching This Is England and the juxtaposition of cheap golden fishies and <laughs> bird's eye crispy waffles and roller caller to, to combo hide in a body and bite in a corpse so the DNA evidence matches up so he goes to prison is really disturbing. Is this your corporate values? As the, It never happens, right, does it? So why does it happen with YouTube? And it happens because boomers can fucking exploit other boomers to think dumb, stupid boomer shit. Da -da 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 -da. You just wouldn't. You just wouldn't question it in a million years. You wouldn't question it in a million years. A horror movie's on. Right? It's Halloween. They're showing Halloween on Halloween. Right? Commercial break. This bird's for you. Oh, well, I guess Budweiser are okay with uh, teenage babysitters being murdered with fucking machetes in uh, suburban America now. Because, I mean, the advert's right there next to Mike Myers. <laughs> must be it must be what their corporate values are right no you wouldn't think that in a million years anyway sorry i'm i'm out of control i it, it just annoys me this legitimately annoys me um so uh, i am out of control i am out of control hang on let's just humming the tune from fucking 15 year old commercials box has gone <sighs> right over the past six months i've watched hundreds of these videos seeing ads from car makers like volvo and honda consumer brands such as pringles chips wireless providers sprint and its subsidiary boost mobile fast food chain taco bell and broadcast to cbs which owns cnet you're not even a real journalism. Low hanging fruit, right. that. They six came. Six months since my box left. Yes. Thank you, burner account, for the six months. Let me tell you, once your you're box goes. Journalism. You, you rarely right. get that box back, homies. Right. Listen! <laughs> they came to my screen. <laughs> Oh, this boomer bell end. I can't. I... You're not even a real. They came to my screen via YouTube software. You're not even a real journalism. That's right. <laughs> it's fucking unreal, isn't it? They came to my screen via YouTube software. Thanks for the five dollars oh, Z box. How you doing, Doc? That was totally unnecessary. We totally. So I suggest we now contact every company ever that has advertised on telly, asking them if they condone the content before yep. or after their commercials. Well, you want to know what the hilarious thing is, of course. With YouTube, you actually do that now if you're an advertiser. You have an opt in. Like, do you want to be seen on this type of content? Edgy content, borderline content. And you have to opt in to even be shown on any of those videos. Which, by the way, there's then a secondary layer with the whole demonetization thing where YouTube will just decide, even though the advertiser has opted in, to not risk it on their behalf. That is how mental a structure is right now. And again, on TV, it's just like, well, um, I saw somebody get killed in a boxing match. <laughs> um, now here's some commercials, you know? Thinking about changing your mobile provider? Sprint can save you 20%. Like, are you alright with that guy who's dead and twitching in the ring then? You know, it, it, again, it, it, just, it just doesn't make sense. No one thinks that way. But when it comes to the internet, you have to think that way because it's political point scoring. Anyway, back to laughing at his boom away of describing it. They came to my screen via YouTube. He makes it sound like a fucking seance. Like... 
Is there anybody there? The advertisers just fucking come down like some milky-eyed fucking psychic. <laughs> you know, oh. You're not even a real journalist. Sprints are telling me they can save That's right. <laughs> They can save you 20%. Oh, God. I'm scared. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm channeling Doug fucking Stanhope. What's Boogie done? Why are people talking about Boogie? Please, no. Oh, but right, I see. He's in the next bit. Sorry, I thought he, I thought he'd, I thought he'd given another one of his opinions. Yeah, you know, like, I thought he'd done the old classic. This is bad, but Boogie, haven't you thought about this? Yes, that's exactly why I meant that it's good, and I was being, I was proving a point by saying it was bad. Yeah, but it's not actually good either. It's a very nuanced and complicated issue. Which is why I thought it was bad the whole time. Have you seen my teeth? Fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> they came... <laughs> they came to my screen... <laughs> via YouTube software. In this case, it's automated advertising system that pairs ads with videos, something that has already raised concerns among some advertisers who have pulled spending on the site. Those ad dollars help drive a cycle that creates shares, spreads, and funds videos further. People love negativity, said Stephen William, a lot Stephen Williams, a longtime YouTuber whose channel Boogie2988. Counts more than 4.5 million subscribers. Williams has attracted hundreds of thousands of people to his videos, including skits in which he plays Francis, an angry, overweight game. God, I wish he would go back to that. Does anyone else just wish he would just... Like... Like, I was like, oh, it, it, it's a character. Oh, my God, there's a whole new guy to get to know behind the... Oh, God, he's... An, oh, no, he's insufferable. <laughs> please, please... Keep flipping the tables and never speak about anything again, <laughs> you spineless moron. <laughs> um, anyway, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> um, he plays Francis, an angry overweight gamer uh, with a lisp, yelling into the camera about the industry's outrage of the day. Francis is in fact a parody of the angriest gamers, Williams told me. The ones who take it all too seriously. That was good. Why Why have you included that? Don't worry. There's no explanation. <laughs> so if you're wondering to yourself, well, that kind of came out of left field, right? One minute you were talking about advertising trends and YouTube and, put, and advertisers pulling money, and then you were interviewing this YouTuber, and he's a parody, so it doesn't even fit what your article's about. Don't worry. We just, whoop. Moving on. It's like a fucking ghost train. And instead of a guy in a sheet jumping out at you, it's fucking just like YouTubers. Woo! Legacy Killer HD. Other YouTubers, like The Angry Joe Show and Jim Sterling, have found similar success by mixing in overly dramatic tongue-in-cheek jokes, skits in the occasional... How do we get to Angry Joe and Jim Sterling talking about hate speech like where is the where where is the through fair because let me tell you jim sterling thank god for him i remember when uh, uh again it was like 2014 2015 or whatever and everybody was like picking sides on the whole fucking stupidity of gamergate and, and all that nonsense and Jim has been somebody who has been uh, has been an advocate for consumer rights his entire career and has never, ever, ever sold out that integrity whatsoever. But then I think he did a I think he did an interview where he said, they're not coming to take your games away. And because some games did get altered at following some outrage culture which not many companies actually resist these days whether they're big companies or indie games devs for some reason kotaku in action which is a fucking mixed bag honestly um generally 
highlight some topics I like, but then I like I saw the reaction, like my article about fucking pedophiles trying to groom kids on Twitch, and there was people in the comments going, first of all, going, well, it's all the parents. I mean, it's not all the parents. That's the point. The platform has to protect people too. And then the other one going, well, I blame Twitch thoughts. <laughs> How? Who <laughs> would? Oh. So that was rough. That was that was a rough one for me. Anyway, they all decided that Jim Sterling was evil for some reason uh, because he has more of a progressive social justice, um, you know, leaning. And I remember at the time, I was a little bit more wrapped up in that bullshit back then. I'm, I'm willing to admit it. I don't think it ever fully pulled the wool over my eyes. I don't think I ever became a reactionary. But I think there was a period of time, you know, around about 2015, maybe 2016, where I saw a lot of nonsense going on. And I probably wasn't all that, like, balanced in how I disseminate, like, how I uh, distributed my time, right? You know, I, there was probably a time where I was putting out, ha ha ha, here's somebody in pink hair having a meltdown type stuff. I wouldn't call myself like an anti-SJW YouTuber, but we, we did some stories on the podcast and, you know, some of it justified, some of it perhaps less so. But anyway, so around about that time, um, I remember, uh, like, asking John TV, t Total Biscuit, sorry, uh, I remember asking him, like, is Jim all right? Because uh, everyone on, like, Tattoo and Action is telling me that he's a cunt. And, you know, he said all this edgy shit a few years ago. And now it looks like he's trying to go the other way and completely atone for that. And they can't fucking stand people like that. And John just straight up told me, he just said, like, Jim's one of the fucking good ones. Like, 100%. Um, you know, and, 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 and made the point. He said, me and you disagree on a bunch of stuff. But I'll never say your journalism is bad, and I'll never say you're not important to what you do, uh, even if we're arguing, because that would be a lie. And he said, and you should treat Jim Sterling with the same respect. And after that, I was like, well, the fucking the great John Bain is saying that. Uh, that means something to me. So, so I did. I always gave him that time. And um, I've never understood why Jim Sterling, somebody who does so much good work for gamers gets like a lot of hate from gamers like yeah dudes you know i've heard the little cringy throwaway like orange man bad lines but that's his opinion and lest we forget john had his own thing with that with the healthcare thing because he was unbelievably stressed out with the money and the election thing it, you know everyone was susceptible to that When, when assessing people, you're not even a real journalism. You must. That's right. Absolutely. Look at them holistically. One of the things we saw with Etika, just the internet in general, you take two tweets and you judge somebody's entire soul on that basis. And people are doing that to Jim. They take a few comments, few interview answers. This is a guy with a fucking body of work. That goes back like over a decade. More. And the vast majority of it is good. And the vast majority of it is on your side. So why can't you just forgive him a few little differences of opinion? It's really bad that we get into that binary shit. That if your views don't completely tessellate with another human being, you'll fucking call them one of the bad guys. Like, no. There's real bad guys out there. And it ain't fucking Jim Sterling. So I've got, I, I still respect his work to this day, and I still fucking watch all his vids, and I'm still subscribed to his YouTube channel, and I still think Jim Sterling, a guy who has literally spent the last two years attacking microtransactions, loot boxes, predatory practices, inferior games, Steam Greenlight, Epic Games bribing people to effectively not meet Kickstart. Like, you know, his entire output is about this. It's for you. Anyway. He's also a lefty. <laughs> a raging lefty. So why he ends up in this scene at Argyle? <laughs> 
Um, it, it's mental. Like, this is like, uh, you know, he's a big uh, polyamorous bisexual guy who's unbelievably liberal in all his views. Like, why is he here? And also as well, Jim Sterling has made multiple videos where he talks about gamers being too angry and gamers rising up in mobs and, and do, he's called that behavior out endlessly he does not belong in this article angry joe doesn't belong in this article angry joe a guy who is so angry he just wanted to be can i just do like movie reviews now is that all right can i just do that and his audience were like no say the things about games like he tried to break away from loads of that stuff so again he doesn't belong here and i have never heard angry joe say anything like super insane like contentious like just never i watch his stuff uh whenever there's a big review coming out i'll watch the angry joe review i don't watch like him streaming the games uh I don't watch his movie reviews. I got Red Letter Media for that, frankly. I don't I don't need you and some guys they don't know like babbling on about it. But if you're happy, always make the content that inspires you and fuck what everyone else wants to do. Um But these these guys are not reactionary and like these guys are not reactionaries. These are not YouTube reactionaries. It's mental. Then uh let's you scroll down uh first they pick out this guy called chris zach zakazewski sorry if i butchered uh, your name there um and they they like criticize uh the fact that um when his channel started like taking off because he did a lot of red dead redemption 2 content right he goes uh he aims to talk in his videos with the same passion he would while playing a game with a friend in front of a TV. I've always viewed the glass as half empty. I've always been able to articulate in a negative way. That includes when he posted a video criticizing social justice warriors, a common internet slur for people who advocate for diversity. What? This guy didn't even know he was getting fitted up. This guy didn't even know he was getting fit. First of all, SJW, it's not a slur, it's a pejorative. That, that, there's a distinction there. And then, um, second of all, that isn't just... Like, the clue is in the name. Now, listen, it's not even a term I've used a lot or use a lot. Uh, but th the whole point of social justice advocates and social justice warriors as they got dubbed by people who were a little bit skeptical about their value system was that they basically admit that they must abuse any power they have to redress a societal balance that will not be redressed without that abuse of power without them interjecting themselves in 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 a way and that leads to some behavior that is unpleasant and unpalatable and i'm sure in a, in a lot of other cases behavior that's actually quite noble and has positive effects uh, like everything else um the idea that uh, it, it that uh, the, the sjw cultural movement are, oh we just advocate for diversity <laughs> like no that that isn't what people were complaining about like that isn't people don't have an issue with that they don't have an issue with that no one has an issue with that racists have an issue with that morons might have an issue with that but that's about it really <clears throat> and and fun, funnily enough the overlap if you did a venn diagram of morons and racists uh you know there's a lot of overlap between that <clears throat> so he did a video called sjw culture is ruining gaming that has a million views that is something i've heard a million times you're not even a real journalism it's not reactionary right. or radical or or anything else it's just an opinion isn't it and yeah i think that, i'm glad you brought that up because i was going to bring that up at the end but i'll say that now both of these people uh say 
that Boogie said this and Upper Echelon Gaming said this, that their quotes were taken out of context and edited. And that actually what they say in the article doesn't represent journalism. what they were trying to convey That's at right. all. Um, then, because of course, the quartering, Jeremy Hambly, as You're he's not known. You're not real journalism. That's right. Um, again, I'm less inclined to be upset about criticism over, over him because I think he does do some of the stuff that's designed to be reactionary that's designed to provoke people that's fine that's the hustle i respect it i don't respect when you put out misinformation but i, I but i understand you're trying to cultivate an audience and grow an audience and this is a very easy way of doing it and then the article ends with this like look how long this garbage is uh this article ends with um This bit down here. Um, the heart of what's driving the YouTube gaming community shift towards negativity isn't just YouTube search and recommendation engine, the YouTubers themselves, or the advertisers that claim to unknowingly fund them. What are we saying here? Like, what, like, Honda is ringing up the fucking incels. Like, yo, listen. <laughs> we Gamers gotta rise up gangweed, yo. Beep, beep. <laughs> like, Oh, is that what we're saying is happening? It's, uh, it's, it's fucking madness. Researchers say human behavior plays a role too. Well, fuck. Gotta, gotta do something about the humans. Humans are out of control. We're hardwired to be attracted to drama. And for millions of people, that means watching gaming commentators online. It can be cathartic and therapeutic, said Kishona Gray, an assistant professor at the University of Illinois and lifelong gamer who wrote the book Race, Gender and Deviance in Xbox Live. <sighs> but that's riveting. What worries her, though, is that Google and YouTube curate these videos into an easily digestible playlist of angry video after angry video without moderation. Loke of Downward Thrust decided he's going to stop feeding into the community's negativity. He spent months experimenting with ideas like straightforward videos about whether to buy a game or attempting to follow the news, the outrage of the day against Bethesda's post-apocalyptic exploration game Fallout 76 and EA's fantasy action game Anthem. But in May, he said he would no longer be making YouTube videos full-time. Well, great, so he just quit then. <laughs> I want to be passionate about it and have fun and share my feelings. Uh, he said, and he's looking to return to making more thoughtfully crafted videos rather than chasing views to put food on his table. I want a life outside this platform. It's what absolute nonsense. I, it's it's mind blowing to me. Like I don't understand how you get from oh, there's this problem with like YouTube radicalizing people and the algorithm uh, to yeah, actually, this guy has said Blizzard is bad, <laughs> or Red Dead Redemption's, a little, you know, political correctness has gone crazy. I keep in mind, there was a guy who was banned off um, YouTube temporarily because he made a Red Dead Redemption 2 video where he kidnapped a suffragette hogtied her and, like, fed her to a crocodile or something. And I mean, oh, he's doing a murderous fantasy about it's like, fucking hell, can we grow up? It's like, the, the, the boundary between the fucking, like, pearl-clutching, won't someone think of the children, right? You're not even a real and uh, won't somebody protect right. these groups from virtual defamation? Like, the, the overlap again is, like, becoming, it, it's the same outrage. It's just packaged differently. Anyway, so CNET didn't get a very particularly good punch in. Like, you put it into context. Right, it was like a 1v4, uh, sorry, a 1v3 fucking wrestling match. It was like Mankind. And, for, and Mankind had to take on Brock Lesnar, The Undertaker, and Kane. 
the mankind. Wait, he's broken in half. By God, broken in half. And he was like on the on the floor. And Carlos Mato was basically Brock fucking Lesnar, stiff as fuck, big potato forearms off the top rope. Boom, right. And then fucking the Undertaker was probably um, the other fucking uh, nonsense that came out at the time. And it's like, boom, he gets the fucking leg drop and he gets fucking tombstone. This Cena article, Kane was like temporarily distracted and got tagged in by Doink the fucking clown. And he just came in and went, ah, 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 ah. threw a bucket of confetti over mankind and that was that. This was absolute fucking just nonsense, but it was an attempt, and it's this blanket fucking attempt to try and like constantly get YouTube to basically pander to like this mainstream media thing, when YouTube's going to be its own thing. And again, remember, they tell us all the time, oh, there's a real problem over at YouTube. How can there be a problem when every time you cunts come and knock in, they give you everything you want? They make all the changes you suggest. We're at a point now where they are manually suppressing the Joe Rogan podcast in the US in, in, in the uh, recommended tab. Like, what more do you want? Well, we know what you want. You want anybody who's like a little, just a little bit off the, the madness of the extreme progressive path to be fucking penalized, censored, and shut the fuck up. And if that was like, if I thought that might be an exaggeration in 2016 it definitely isn't now 